E3 is finally over. Now we can talk about the good stuff here on Beyond the Pixel. If this is your first time here on Beyond the Pixel, make sure you hit subscribe and bell notification down below so you get notified when I upload or go live with Beyond the Pixel. So E3 has finally came and finally gone. Now we can actually take a step back and look back at all the games that we enjoyed, didn't enjoy, all the releases from Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo. We got everything that we wanted to see and more. Uh, this episode I'm doing it by myself. It is uh, the time of recording it is Father's Day, so uh, my co-host obviously is enjoying Father's Day. So, you know, first, I want to say with well, the question of the podcast or this episode is, what is your favorite uh, release from E3? Make sure you leave it in the comment section down below. So, all right, we're gonna we're gonna finally get started with this. You know, so let's bring up let's bring up the first thing that I want to talk about, and that is Nintendo. We're gonna start with the Nintendo Switch. And what I liked was I loved how many games were coming out. Um, don't like how Fortnite, I don't care about Fortnite beyond Switch. Fortnite's everywhere now. You're on your phone, on all systems, everywhere. Fortnite is everywhere, and it's here to stay, unfortunately. But we're here to talk about the good games that actually don't require freemium. And that is Octopath Traveler for the RPG, an RPG for the Nintendo Switch. Now, I've played, if the demo is currently available on the Nintendo eShop, so if you are a big fan i'm talking about a huge humongous fan of rpgs this is the rpg you want to get picked you want to pick up uh, pick up for the switch um definitely not um not your typical final fantasy it's not uh, super ultra 3d but from what i've played of the demo it is uh, pretty well done um i would have to say that i am very impressed with the amount of work and effort that's placed into this game. Um, the dialogue is all um, audio based. And I, I first thought it was gonna be like a text based. Um, it is text, but typically when we have text, there's no audio and there's audio with the text. And you know, I'm not just talking about the subtitles. I mean, actually like text thought bubbles and stuff and there's audio with it. So this game is gonna be a must have for the Switch. I'm definitely thinking of picking it up as in I'm going to most likely pick it up as long as the Money is all right, and it'll be coming out, I believe, uh, rest, uh, early this month. Uh, I'll have a link to all the games I talked about in the description down below, as well as most likely just a link to each console's E3, so you can see what other games were released with each console. But RPG-wise, Octopath Traveler, that's not a Final Fantasy game, is really well done. So, next... We got Pokemon Let's Go. Pokemon Let's Go Home. I swear. Uh, all right. So Pokemon Go clearly cannot die. Nintendo Switch. Nintendo is trying their greatest to save it. And uh, Pokemon Let's Go. Pokemon Let's. It's an interesting take on the first generation of Pokemon. That's right. We're going all the way back to the Kanto region in this game, ladies and gentlemen. And let me tell you, I find it quite interesting interesting indeed that they decided to even go back to the first generation as a really a main pokemon game for the switch now we have pokemon tournament and they really didn't put a lot of work into it because i think they were too busy trying not to compete with smash that they pretty much let pokemon tournament to die even though i think it's a really well done game how pokemon fighting should be but uh, unfortunately uh as a main Pokemon game, it just wasn't as popular as Nintendo probably thought it would be. So they decided let's make it even more kidified, which I mean, Pokemon is for kids. So that's why it's, it had, Pokemon has became less cool um, on the main consoles. I mean, we had Pokemon Coliseum, we had Pokemon Stadium. Those games were cool and fun. This game is just childish and trying to save Pokemon Go. Um, they have also Let's Go Eevee. I didn't know Eevee was such a popular Pokemon. I think people collect Eevee because you want to evolve it into one of its like 12 iterations of becoming an Eevee evolution. Um, that's the main reason I collect it. I actually don't use it in a main uh, Pokemon fight team. Uh, I think it's relatively just more of a collector's and it's kind of fun to do the different ways of evolving Eevee. You know, evolve Eevee day, night, stones, being in a certain area that's <laughs> mystifying or whatever. Or having a certain moveset that makes it evolve for some reason. Uh, when they implemented the fairy 
types but besides the point pokemon let's go is going to be a hit for the kids um my wife who babysits has a little kid uh who loves pokemon so much you can talk to her about pokemon and she's gonna love it so pokemon let's go is gonna be a hit for the kids and let's move on to the last topic i want to discuss with nintendo switch and that is super smash brothers for obviously the switch and there's just no ordinary super smash brothers no no ladies and gentlemen this this is ultimate super smash brothers all right this is the ultimate ultimate super smash Brothers. when i mean ultimate i mean they have every smash character okay every every single one from all iterations from smash smash 64 melee smash brawl smash wii u smash 3ds all iterations all now on the switch and smash fans are gonna love it because this is gonna be the first i think it's gonna be the first iteration of smash where we don't have the gamecube controller the best controller for nintendo and i kind of they're most likely let's be real here they're probably going to release a gamecube accessory um for the switch i think their power control thing is stupid i think it's okay to stick to one type of controller look at playstation and xbox they've been practically using the same controller design since the first generation of the their respective consoles so you know i think i, I kind of don't understand why people they, they, they want it to die but let's be real here it's it's staying i think it should stay i think that little power control thing is stupid just remove it and have the have bring back just to bring back the gamecube controller i feel like nintendo's the only one that feel like they had a need to change every console's um controller uh so they could be innovative and new and fancy and compete in their own little world um you know they're, they're that kid that plays by themselves in the in the playground and it's weird and it's eating ants or something but that's the size point smash ultimate it's going to be a hit all three except for me octopath traveler is more of a niche gaming uh community besides pokemon let's go and smash uh, even smash is still niche but it has a bigger fan base than i would say octopath traveler has however i'm definitely out of a three most likely i'm gonna get octopath traveler and smash ultimate because i love I love watching Smash and I love playing Smash casually. I'm not a super competitive Smash person. But onto the next system, which is PlayStation, ladies and gentlemen. The PlayStation got something spicy for us because they got an official release date of Kingdom Hearts 3. We've been wanting a release date of Kingdom Hearts 3 since Kingdom Hearts 2 came out came back out in 2005, remastered, remade, HD upscaled on a PS3 and then Ultimate Connect Collection on PlayStation 4 and we finally finally there's like 16 games between between the first between Kingdom Hearts 3 and the first Kingdom Hearts game and maybe not 16 but there's a lot and we finally got a release date we finally got a hard line date and that is January 29 2019 of course of course it's 2019 this game is going. This game probably been in the making since two, Kingdom Hearts One, but you know, for those who are wanting to get into Kingdom Hearts genre or wants to understand Kingdom Hearts as a whole, um, my, your best bet is to get the Kingdom Hearts Collector Edition. No, not Collector Edition. Kingdom Hearts. I say one point five and two two point five combined makes four. Uh, on the PlayStation 4, it has Kingdom Hearts 1, which is all you need to know. Um, beside, in between Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. They also have you know, the Chain of Memories. They have Birth by Sleep. And they have the cutscenes from the 3DS games. Um, besides um, 3D Dream Drop Distance, it's actually not on that. It's on 2.8, which is a prequel to Kingdom Hearts 3, which is like the only reason to actually buy that game. Um, besides, I guess, 3D Dream Drop Distance, except it's not 3D, it's just Dream Drop Distance. Um, so they finally got it all on one console for the first time ever. Um, you can also watch cutscenes from the, the Keyblade, which was a mobile game um, to play on your phone. It was Kingdom Hearts, but on your phone. But it explains a lot of story, um, prequel story. So if someone was to create a movie of this, it'd be too darn confusing. It's more of like a, 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 a saga anime where we have the uh, Ansem saga, then we had the uh, Castle Oblivion saga, then we have the um, K 
Kingdom Hearts 2 saga. I don't even know what to call it. The Nobody Saga. That's why I like to call it. We'll call it the Nobody Saga. And then we got uh, the prequel, uh, um, Kingdom Hearts Dragon Ball. Uh, so there's just so much into this game. You have to play every game. So luckily, they can, uh, Square Enix slash Disney has also made it easier for everyone to actually get into their uh, highly popular game. But uh, that's besides it. That's enough on Kingdom Hearts. We got other games to cover. And that is, my friends, this game, next game, is, you know, it's another Japanese flavor, but highly, highly anticipated. It's going to be delicious. It's going to be good. And that is the Ghost of Tsushima. The Ghost of Tsushima um, so it looks like a really well done um, action RPG game that the people need. We need an action RPG game that's not Skyrim and that's not Dark Souls. Um, I love Dark Souls. However, I'm a little peeved off of their little remaster okay yeah yeah it's smoother and 60 frames per second but that's besides the point um ghost of tsushima is actually well in detail kind of reminds me a little bit of neo except it's actually looks like a lot better and it looks like it'll play a lot better um looks like it's a lot more focused on small things uh combat uh a little bit more precision than just uh dodge rolling all over the place and then hitting someone in the butt um the just the small details in the cutscene looks like you're in the real life uh you're a real life samurai in J feudal japan and you're about to slay some mofos so that is a must get for the playstation 4. now if you're not into rpgs you're a little bit more of a comic person let's say uh not the x-force by uh by deadpool or nothing like that but something a little bit more of uh, your friendly neighborhood um superhero well we got spider-man of course coming out this year and this was released i think e3 2016 maybe 2017 but most likely 2016 and uh people are flipping their crap because heck we got a new spider-man game that i didn't know we asked for but we needed apparently um spider-man has a has a love-hate relationship with gamers i feel like we love Spider-Man, but we hate their we hate Spider-Man's games. I think Spider-Man. I think everyone liked the first Spider-Man. Maybe um, I played Spider-Man three, and I think everyone hated Spider-Man three as well as the movie Spider-Man three. Um, <laughs> not only did they hate the movie, but they also hate the video game. Um, so Spider-Man has definitely had some very crappy games. I mean, just terrible games. Even on, I believe the. Uh, just a regular Nintendo NES. It had a terrible Spider-Man game. There's also a Game Boy game that was pretty terrible. So hopefully this breaks the curse. And uh, Spider-Man, uh, it looks good. It feels good. Um, if you haven't watched any gameplay of Spider-Man, then you need to click off the video right now. Actually, don't do that. I, wait till the end of the video. And then go and watch Spider-Man gameplay. And we're like, I need a PS4. And then get Spider-Man pre-ordered with a Super Ultra Legendary Deluxe Edition. So I can enjoy all the many, probably ultimate costumes that's going to come with Spider-Man. Um, I expect a lot of DLC costumes with Spider-Man. And people are just going to buy it. But I don't blame them. But now probably the low point in the video. I always put Xbox at the bottom. Because my Xbox uh, internal hard drive died. So I have to figure out a way how to replace it. There's videos on it, luckily. I had to get like a 2.5 HD storage thing. But that's besides the point. Xbox, you're doing the same thing as you always do. So you got to make sure you, you keep your fans happy by releasing Gears of War 5 or Gears 5. Uh, because that's the only thing that's saving the console. No, I'm just kidding. Exclusive lies, Sony's always better. But the key exclusives on Xbox are pretty darn good. Gears of War, I've never personally played every single Gears of War game. However, I hear it is held to a very high esteem or whatever. It's put on a pedestal, essentially. You can't talk bad about Gears of War without a bunch of fans probably flooding the comment section and saying, Gears of War, you pr basically telling me to do terrible things to myself because I don't play Gears of War or don't necessarily like Gears of War. But... I thought the franchise was going to end with three, came with four, now there's five. So, uh, Gears of War, man, I don't know what to say about it, but it does look good. Gears of War always looks good. It'll probably play very well, and people are going to buy it because they need something to play that's not PUBG, essentially. 
basically what I've liked about this E3 is that there's a lot of games out there that are not just battle royales. I need something to play besides a battle royale, um, such as H1Z1 or PUBG or not Fortnite. So, uh, no to Realm Royale. All right, Gears of War, Xbox fan, must buy, in the store. Here's another must buy that I didn't expect really to get, knowing how Microsoft is, but we'll take it with a grain of salt. Halo Infinite, Halo 6. Um, Halo, people love Halo, okay? People hate what Microsoft has done to Halo. I am one of those people. I feel like Halo is such a good franchise that could have been better and better well done if Microsoft wasn't Microsoft and basically turned everything they touch into sludge. But Halo 6, um, I hope it really revitalizes the Halo series. Um, Halo Master Chief Collection, I own. I have Halo 5, so I technically own every Halo game except for the Halo Wars. I'm not going to touch those. But the main Halo games, they're definitely worth playing, especially on a single player perspective. Uh, learning more about the story, playing um, the updated graphics, which is kind of cool because you could turn off the updated graphics and you're playing like the original. Um, so on that was actually the first two was on PC, um, but then they decided not to put it on PC anymore. I think Halo 5. Um, I started to play the story, but you can get this game dirt cheap. You can't get the Master Collection, though. The Master Chief Collection dirt cheap, though. You got you to pay at least $30 to get it, uh, which I did. I was just at Walmart, and I did see it on sale for $30. But I currently already own it because I got that as a birthday gift. No, Christmas gift. One of those two. But besides the point, Halo Infinite. Uh, we got, I got a little, a little bit more about this before I can make a decision where we, I should tell you guys to buy it, but uh, just just wait on it. Let's just sit on it. Let's see what Microsoft does. I don't trust them at all. I can't even trust them with their own consoles because they break down after two years. Let me tell you, I've had my PlayStation for four years. I had my Xbox for half that time, and my PlayStation has not crapped out. So, Microsoft, you suck. But... You do have one thing I want, only one thing, and that is Devil May Cry. Holy crap, did this gameplay look amazing. It looked absolutely clean, crisp, nothing like that remake crap. And even though the remake wasn't terrible, it was okay, but it's not what fans asked or wanted. Um, you know, Devil May Cry, 1, 2, 3, 4, they're all good games. Even though 4 was meh, it was alright. But we all love Dante, so... Um, and we're going to get more Dante. In fact, we get three unique playable characters. We know for a fact that Dante is going to be one in Nero. Nero. If you don't know who Nero is, he was pretty much the main protagonist in Devil May Cry 4. One through three mainly focuses on Dante. Um, but I don't know who the third unique character is going to be played as. It might be, we might see a return to Virgil. Who knows? Even though I'm pretty sure he's been killed, but, um... Uh, who knows but uh, I definitely would find it interesting if you could play as Virgil um, or a new character that's similar to Dante and Nero but um, you know this game holy crap that trailer was abs it was action packed from second to second there was no there was no uh, there was no pause there was no no lull moment in the trailer even though I don't expect the trailer to have lull moments um, it was just it was just amazing. It was just good. You should get it. If you don't buy it, then you're missing out. You're going to miss out a lot. I think like this game has a lot to offer to help revitalize the Xbox. Um, add more value to the Xbox than there currently is, which is not a lot. Because um, there's a lot of games you can play on other games. But we're going to go with the, uh, the conclusions here. I'm going to go with some off-script games here that I really like to see. That I liked... Um, Man, Walking Dead, final season. Um, if you haven't checked that out, you have to check that out. If you have not played any of the Walking Dead games by Telltale, not that other Walking Dead crap. No, no, I'm talking about the actual good game. Um, you have to at least just watch. You, if you don't want to play it, you can literally just watch someone else play it because it's just nothing but cutscenes because cut it's only telling a story. So, holy crap, Walking Dead. Ah, oh, man, it had the feels at the end. 
had feels when it said uh, when she's when <laughs> Clementine tells uh, AJ, now what do you do if I'm bit? And I'm like, cry, because <laughs> Clementine's been our our main person, um, more or less throughout this entire series. It's pretty much been about Clementine's story, um, and literally. I, I the art is just like the first the first one and we all know what happened to lee we didn't think lee was going to die i think he died a very dumb way uh, or got bit a very dumb way um <laughs> so but that's just that's, that's an honorable mention um another honorable mention um definitely has to be um Ooh, oh crap! Now I'm getting a brain fart because I was so hyped on the uh, Walking Dead. Um, but uh, I guess Black Ops Four has some honorable mention. Uh, I think that's going to be a really good game. It's going to bring a lot of fans back. Boots on the ground, not World War, not, not just a remake, not what you know, not whatever. So um, Black Ops Four, I'm excited for Division Two. I'm actually pretty excited for because there's no game like the Division Two. Um, very interesting gameplay. I loved it. I hope Ubisoft actually does better with their games, which it sounds like they are they're actually are reaching a turning point. Uh, I know I didn't talk about Assassin's Creed. Sorry. I'm not a big Assassin's Creed fan. Um, some of you are just like diehard Assassin's Creed fans. I know. Sorry. Didn't talk about it. Not going to talk about it. But I am going to talk about how Battlefield 5 is not going to be worth playing because I don't trust ea in any way they said there's going to be all free content you know none of that paidness you know no loot boxes you earn your way through you work hard you work eight to five whatever i don't believe that crap for a second i am very hesitant in buying any ea game that's not madden so you know take that with a grain of salt but thank you guys for watching um, this is another episode of Beyond the Pixel. I did this one solo a lot shorter, but this was the recap of E3 2018 and my wish list I will put in the um, description down below on what games I want to see uh, this year, like my favorite five favorite games for 2018 and I'll see you guys in the next one. In the next one, make sure you hit the subscribe and bell notification. I'll see you guys in the next Beyond the Pixel. Peace.